Some songs can teach us how to write better songs. And Yesterday by the Beatles is absolutely one of those songs. There are three chord moves in this song that I want to show you. And if you can see them and understand them, you can then use them in your own songwriting. And I promise you that any of these three techniques will make your chord progressions more interesting. And honestly, anytime I use this song, when I teach my university classes, it blows my students' minds. So the very first chord that I want to show you and explain to you happens towards the end of the verse section. So I'm gonna play through the verse section for you and you can follow along the chords and when we get there, we'll magnify in on that chord, explain it and show you how to use it in your own songs. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe. Alrighty, so if we actually look at the chord progression here, the chord that I want to draw your attention to is actually this chord right here. Okay, this G major chord. What makes G major special in this song? Well, this is a song in the key of F major. And if I actually look at the chords in the key of F major, G major is not there, it should be a G minor. That's the chord that belongs comfortably and fluidly in the key of F. But here's the thing about a G major chord. We can call this chord a two major chord and it's a really beautiful variation on a G chord to include inside your major key. But there's a very important way that we want to use the two major chord if we're gonna use it. So the two major chord is a major chord because it contains a note that's not inside the key of F. It contains the note B, natural, which we can also call the sharp four of the key. Now here's the thing that the Beatles know about how to use the two major chord. What you want to do next is go to the four chord inside the key, which in this song is B flat major. Why is it a good idea to go from the two major to the four major in the key? The reason is this, we get this really beautiful chromatic motion from that B natural down to the B flat and chromatic motion feels really, really good. A really, really basic chord progression that uses this principle is to go one, two, four, and back to one. And the two actually sounds really nice if I play it as a dominant seven chord. So let's pick a key that's actually different to F because this is one of the secrets about borrowing chords from other songs. Often just changing the key will take us away from the reference song and loosen our ears up so we don't feel like we're just imitating the song that we're referencing. Okay, so I'm gonna take it to the key of C. So in the key of C, two dominant seven is a D seven chord. The four chord is F and of course, then I go back to C. So let me play this chord progression for you. It's really fun and really bright. Let me play the chord progression with the regular D chord that is diatonic to the key of C, which is D minor. And you're gonna hear that it sounds good, but it doesn't have the brightness and the sparkle of that two dominant seven chord. Here we go. Right, it's got that nice minor flavor, but the two dominant seven is really, really special and the Beatles know it and you should know it too. The second chord move that I wanna show you is what the Beatles do in the bridge of this song. And it's so simple, but so effective. And honestly, there's probably a hundred songs that you already love that do this as well. There are actually quite a lot of chords in this bridge section. And again, it's only one chord that I really wanna point out to you because this is the chord that gives the bridge its kind of bridgey feel. Yes, there are these transition chords, but that's not what I wanna point out to you. What I wanna point out to you is that really this kind of chord progression after the transition starts on D minor, which in the key of F is what we call the six minor chord. It is a diatonic chord, which means it is a chord that is naturally inside the key of F, but there's something special 
about the six minor chord. The six minor chord is what's called the relative minor chord. And the best way to understand it is that if F in the key of F is the sun, well, D minor is the moon. If F is bright yellow, D minor is indigo. These two chords are complementary opposites of each other, which make them absolutely perfect for creating a contrasting section. So in this song, that D minor chord really sets the bridge off. There is this beautiful descending thing that happens, but really D minor is where everything starts. So the six minor chord is a real go-to chord for a lot of songwriters when we're writing a bridge, particularly if we want to introduce that kind of rich darkness into our bridge. A beautiful contemporary song that does that is the song Nothing by Bruno Major. And if you want more of an analysis of that song, as well as a bunch of other bridge writing techniques, you can check out this video at the end of this video, because there's one more technique that I'm going to show you that really is actually probably the most interesting bit of music theory in this whole song. So our third and final chord move in the song Yesterday is probably the most sophisticated chord move and really adds that element of sophistication and richness to a chord progression, but it requires a little bit of explanation. So this is the one that you're going to have to stick with me here if you really want to understand it and be able to use it in your own songwriting. So this is a technique called the 2-5. Where you're going to see this happening is right back here at the beginning of the verse section. This is called a two five, but what's it a two five of? It's not actually the two chord or the five chord of the key of F. What this little chord combo is doing, it's targeting a different chord in the key of F. In this case, it is targeting D minor. Again, that's our six chord. All right, so in this little instance, A dominant seven, the A chord here, it's not the five of F, it is the five of D minor, which means the A is a perfect fifth above D. So it's the dominant chord of six. Its sole purpose is to create a little moment of lift that falls back to the D. It's what's called a secondary dominant chord, which means it's a dominant chord, not in the key of F, but it's the dominant chord of one of the other chords in the key of F. But you don't even need to understand the music theory if you're like, I don't understand a word she just said. Whatever chord in the key you want to play, precede it with a dominant seven chord that is a perfect fifth above the root of the target chord. But that's not all. The thing that makes this really sophisticated is the chord that comes before the A7. It is the E minor chord here that creates this little 2-5 combo, which is really how we get this sophisticated, beautiful sound that kind of creates a cascade down to the D minor chord. And why do we call it 2? Well, again, that's in relationship to the note D of the D minor chord. So if we think of D as one momentarily, our target chord is one. Well, what's two? D, E. So this little combo two, five, it is always a minor chord followed by a dominant seven chord that then goes down a perfect fifth to our target diatonic chord. This is the two, five move. So let's actually practice this two, five concept targeting a different chord in the key of F. So let's start the chord progression with F. It's a nice idea. It helps us really hear the key. And what I'm gonna do is leave this second bar blank because that's where I'm gonna create my two five. What I wanna do first is pick my target chord, okay? So this time I'm gonna target the four chord. I'm gonna target B flat and I'll just repeat that in the fourth bar. So in this bar, I wanna create a two five of four. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is ask myself, what is a perfect fifth above B flat? The perfect fifth above B flat is actually F. So I'm going to play the chord F. And if I really want to reinforce it, I'm going to play that as a dominant seven chord. And then to complete the two five, I'm going to ask myself, what is a major second above B flat? And the answer is C. So this chord is going to be C minor. If I want to get really fancy, I can play it as a C minor seven. So let's see what this chord progression sounds like. And I can guarantee you it's going to sound awesome.
told you. That little 2-5 move to chords in the key of F that are not just F is one of the favorite moves of songwriters who write in neo-soul, R&B, funk, jazz, blues. It's a really, really beautiful chord progression that adds that kind of sophistication to any chord progression. If you're interested in a deeper discussion of the 2-5 move, you can check out this video where I analyze a John Legend song where he uses exactly that move and I work through a bunch of different variations on how you can adapt that chord progression into your own original chord progressions. Thanks guys, enjoy. <laughs> 